Let's move on to oral therapies. Uh, what are the oral therapies we have available? So some of the oral therapies we've covered, uh, methotrexate, cyclosporin, acetretin, and of course, a premolast. So uh, all of these still have some role in our usage. I think they are declining in my practice, as some of you mentioned. Cyclosporin we used to think of as the fastest acting agent for psoriasis, but really a lot of our biologics nowadays have eclipsed that. So it's really kind of taken a more supplementary role, especially with all of the um, side effects that you can see with those medications. You have to worry about their kidneys, with methotrexate, with the liver. Um, certainly I find that in layering therapy, I still find a good use for acetretin especially same, and, same and some of those other medications. Um, also with the Premolast, it's something that uh, is, a, is a very popular medication of course right now. The efficacy is not spectacular overall, but I think in certain areas where you have scalp disease, pommel plantar psoriasis, I find that it punches a little higher than its weight class overall. So I, I do find a role for that. I do find a role for additive therapy with the Premolast as well. Collaborative therapies, I think, are an important part of our future discussion. Clinical trials for psoriasis have been rather limited in that regard. Some of the atopic dermatitis trials, at the very least, allow for the use of corticosteroids, which I think is unique and more real world. But for me, a drug like a premolas, and for that matter, even methotrexate, I use still fairly frequently as add-on therapy because you don't always want to make that jump. You may not want to make that jump, or you have a patient who says, you know what, I'm just not using my creams. I have a little bit left on my elbows and my knees, but I'm just not using my creams. I moisturize every once in a while. What else can I do? That's my opportunity to be artistic because we can be so artistic with these drugs. And I go back and I use older drugs all the time. Our systemic agents, particularly the biologics, are not necessarily perfect for palmar plantar disease. I have many patients on biologic therapies and I'll add on acetretin, and I love that drug. I think it's highly effective for palmar plantar disease, at least in my camp. I would totally agree with that. I definitely use acetretin for palmar plantar disease. Um, one of the things that I'm excited about in terms of the future is the possibility of, a, of an oral agent with a better efficacy. And I think uh, they're working on like a TIC2 inhibitor and, and others that may yield a real nice uh, you know, bridge between you know, a, a systemic agent in terms of a biologic and a, an oral agent that works you know, better than what we currently have available. But I think that underlies the whole kind of issue right now in that Overall, our, our biologics are by and large much more effective than these oral agents, which is why I think the implication we're all using them kind of more first line. But I think really the safety also, in, in the old days, people, there was this perception around biologics that these were unsafe medications that you would get lymphoma and all these things. And really, especially with our newer agents, I, I find them much safer than the majority of our oral agents on the market. I think I one, of the, one of the greatest things about recent times is Generally speaking, I think in medicine, as you increase efficacy of a drug, you probably lose out on safety in general. But here we've been increasing safety, and, I'm sorry, increasing efficacy and increasing safety. And I think that's been really a, a great thing. So, you know, it's funny, patients will come in and they hear an injection and they think, oh, it's gotta be more dangerous. But in fact, what I explained to them is pills are small molecules. They affect many different organs, sites in the body large injectable medications, which are antibodies uh, or are similar to antibodies, target one tiny molecule. And you can give something that is so targeted, so designer made to not hurt the body, that, but it has to be given by injection. I like that one, I'm gonna uh, use that. <laughs> and I, I do say that regularly to patients, they generally buy into it. The other thing is overcoming the fear of injection. Once you try it, little, I say to patients, little kids do it. And, uh, uh, and actually little kids with diabetes inject insulin often twice a day. We're talking about now injections that we can give as infrequently as every three months. And a lot of the companies that produce these agents have designed uh, devices, if you will, now and some of the injections are certainly much less painless. Some of the auto injectors um, are appreciated by our patients has been reviewed in many clinical studies. We've taken some of the excipients out with some of the agents like citric acid uh, that burn a lot. And so our patients will actually tell us now that that wasn't so bad. And, 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 I, and I agree with that. And um, I'm very much uh, on board with this, you know, the targeted nature 
uh, biologic therapies is a crucial educational point for our patients. And I think part of the theme that I'm hearing today is that we really are responsible to have to tell our patients about this, really educate them, despite our limited time with them sometimes. But I, I really think when they understand more about what these targeted agents can do, uh, they'll appreciate that a little bit of pain is worth a lot of little gain.